Hi guys, Ryu here with another video for Blender. In this one we're going to be talking about an important subject of clean shading with booleans on difficult surfaces. And by difficult surface, I mean curved surfaces. So if you look at this element here, everything looks pretty clean, right? Everything looks nice. But if you look really closely, okay, you can see some shading breakages here because you can see that the reflection of the light is being distorted, right? However, if you look at the same element here, you see that the light is just flowing beautifully through that element, right? There's no distortions, no problems, right? There's some Z fighting here on the bottom, but that's on the inside of this element, not on the outside. Let me just fix it very quickly so we can move on with our lives, right? There we go. Uh, so now you can see that the shading here is just flawless, right? And let me show you the topology. Topology is not quads, it's just angons. There's one angon, another angon, okay? There's another angon, and one more angon, and here's angon two. So you do not need quads to have perfect shading. That's just bullshit, okay? That's myth. And let me tell you that I didn't use any shrink wrap tricks or normal transfer tricks here this is just pure topology manipulation so you can do it with the most basic tools in blender which is you know adding edge or simply adding loop or moving invert and that's it because there's no magic here no crazy tricks it's just a basic understanding of topology and that's the whole point of this video the only thing you need to understand is the topology tension and curvature tension you need to understand how topology runs and reacts with bevels, okay, and how to run or how to remove supporting edges. That's really important, okay? We're going to be talking about all these topics in here, and hopefully after this video, we're going to be much more confident in terms of creating really beautiful, you know, uh, shading on difficult booleans, okay? Now, before we start, if you're interested in studying hard surface and deepening your knowledge in that area, we have a page with free courses and free tutorials and materials for studying on our website blenderbros.com. There is a link in the video description, so check that link and see what we have to offer. And if you are interested in more organized way of studying, we have a coaching and community program with tons of courses and assets available to you day one. Fantastic forum with a lot of helpful people and also Josh and myself are very active over there and there are other perks like for example discounts on upcoming premium courses etc so it's a really cool place to be check it out and link is also in the video description so we're going to grab a cylinder and it's going to be a default one so 32 32 verts right i'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees on x and move it somewhere here okay so what I want to do here is I'm going to sharpen this or smooth it with hard ops and box cutter. And I'm going to uh, draw a loop here in the middle, Control b to split it, and Shift-click on Curve Extract to create this kind of a panel. And I'm going to apply this panel, okay? So I'm going to uh, apply this solidification. And I'm going to run a regular bull here uh, with box cutter. And let's say we're going to create, you know, six segmented bevel, boom, right? And you can see right off the bat that we got problems with shading, especially if I'm going to run a boolean uh, bevel on it, you will see problems, right? So how do we solve this problem? Well, let's look at the geometry, okay? The reason why we get shading breakage is because we have, after the cut, we're going to have massive angles, right, being created here, okay? So before we do anything, we need to sort of break them into smaller angles or smaller pieces. So we can do that by running loops and we can sort of isolate this right hand side area uh, from the boolean. So this one's going to be clean and we're going to have to deal only with this part. Okay, same here. I'm going to run a loop, right? So run a loop uh, through the middle and we're going to run, you know, maybe let's say, oh, let's say three loops here. Okay. Cool, cool. So now if I'm going to go back here, you can see that my shading already looks way better. Okay, if I'm going to go here to matcap, right, you can see that the shading on the left is much better than the one on the right. And the reason for it mainly is because the angons now here are much smaller than this one. There's one massive angon here and multiple ones on the right side. So the first tip is going to be the smaller geo you deal with, the better. Okay, it's not about being quads, it's about being 
manageable, right? Because we're not going to be running sub D on it, so we don't need quads, okay? Even quads, even if you have quads, all quads, you can still have bad shading because quads get broken by the curvature. Let's go into the front view again and let's fix this, right? So let's apply this, right? And now we're going to have to deal with it. So another rule of clean shading is that you need to run supporting edges, okay, at 90 degrees to the edge they flow into. So let's say this edge here, right? If I wanted to support this edge, I would need to run this loop this way. So it's going to be about 90 degrees or close to it. Uh, so when you run bevel through it, you're not going to get any distortions. Also, the, the shading is going to be much cleaner. So I would run this loop here instead of here. But I don't want to remove this loop yet, because if I do that, I will affect shading of this massive angle. So before I do that, I might actually run another edge here and then remove this one, okay? So you want to first run a supporting edge that's gonna hold the shading and then remove whatever you don't need. That's the correct order of doing things. Another thing is that you do not move supporting beams or supporting edges or loops. These loops support the curvature of the cylinder because it goes around the cylinder, right? So if I, for example, remove one of these edges here, right? You see my shading's enough gonna shift to flatter because that, that edge supports the curvature. These edges do nothing, okay? They just they're absolutely unimportant. I can remove them, nothing's gonna change. Because they don't really uh, contribute to the curvature of the sphere, they only support this small bit here. That's important, right? So I don't want to move this edge because it's a supporting beam, or I don't want to move it a lot. Or before you move it or remove it, you want to run a close proximity supporting loop, okay? So what we could do is Control R here, and we could actually run um, a loop here like this, right? All right, close to this cutout. It's going to be a supporting kind of like a proximity loop, right? And this will isolate this entire area, okay? And then I can play with this. So, for instance, now I could actually, you know, maybe merge it in here. Maybe it's going to be a little bit better. Maybe. And, uh, you know, because I shifted this small edge, it doesn't affect this massive one. Okay, see what I mean? So this could be a little bit better here. Same here, I could just connect these two. And the only concern is going to be now this massive angle here. So it would be much better if you could slice it in half. So what I could do is run the risky edge here like this and break it, but then we're going to have this pull here on this edge. So what you could do, right, you could technically run an edge like this. The only problem is that it occasionally this will break shading, okay, on this, uh, on this part here. So you have to, you know, you have to be careful, you have to kind of uh, pick your battles. You see now that this bit here looks a bit more flat. But if I remove that, it's going to go back to round. You see that? So, you know, you really need to pick your your battles, as I said. We could combine maybe these two and create a triangle. And I think it's going to be a little bit better, maybe. Um, but the problem here is, uh, in general, that we have not enough geo to work with. Okay, so no matter what I do here, I'm always going to have a bit of a wonky shading. I simply have not enough geo, okay? So I'm going to create another cylinder. Right, and I'm going to run 80, um, vert, I mean 80 segments on it, right? And let's just run a loop here, right? Let's just do that, and I'm gonna go a little bit faster now, okay? Because reasons, and let's just cut it. And now I'm going to select more segments, okay? So I'm going to select, let's say, 12, right, and cut it. Now, I also want to see where this cut falls. It falls in between the edges. It's also important. It's good to boolean between, uh, you know, somewhere in between supporting edges. You don't want to cut on the edge because it's going to be a bit difficult to run a bevel on. Because when you run a bevel on, you're going to have these edges falling like at a very steep angle towards this boolean. So if I shifted this boolean, right, a little bit up or down, I would be having this boolean running, you know, parallel to this edge. So this edge of the boolean would be parallel to this one. And that's not a very good idea because, like I said, you're going to have a very steep angle going in, right? So now watch. I'm going to create some security loops here. One over here and one closer one, really close one. 
one I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna create maybe that many okay and this geo is way more dense okay already and it's going to help me with shading so watch now I'm gonna clean this really quickly and uh, let's see what we can do here so first of all we can easily connect these two uh, we can connect these two with J we can move this one a little bit higher like this and we could move this one down here but before we do that let's run a connecting edge here okay so let's do that and this one could go here and this one could go here and you know Bob Jungle look how clean the shading here is right we got some tiny pools on certain areas like here for example well this one needs to go for sure so let's see that we could run an edge over here all the way um, this one's definitely could go this one could go as well these two could go yeah I think this could go as well and now we got this kind of a situation look how clean the sheeting is here right there's a little bit of a break here right but it's it's just almost invisible and you know um, that's much cleaner and the denser you go the better and you know we could still run a loop here okay we could still run a loop here that's gonna break this even further like this okay so it's gonna help with shading even more yeah and you know we can then refine it there's a pole in here which is a little bit you know dangerous so we could do maybe something like this maybe this is gonna be better let's just remove that and there's a pole here too which is not the best idea so what we could do is maybe we could run something like this okay and remove that this doesn't really work for us so maybe we can run a loop really close here like this okay and isolate it so now if you wanted to you could just you know remove some of this geometry like for example none of these elements here okay is needed all you need is these okay because they support the curvature here but you don't need these so you can remove them right so you can very easily just grab these and keep removing them because we don't need them okay so there you go we can remove them and this one well we, we can actually remove this one too this one needs to stay because it supports the shading could move it a bit closer so gg and move it a bit closer uh, let's just press ef and you know move it somewhere here there you go and boom you know and you got little geometry and a very clean shading so that's how you do it guys if you know that you're gonna be running a boolean um through certain difficult areas make sure that you have enough of geo okay make sure that you know these supporting edges kind of like um beam outside like a like sun rays okay from the center of this edge so they're perpendicular to uh to this uh running edge so when you run a bevel on it because bevel will you know bevel will pull these uh edges um, with with it so you need to have perpendicular edges running to your geo that will support your shading okay so that's really important right and then you know um you don't you can remove all the edges you don't need because um they just you know waste of space so you can create a really crazy topology like here with a lot of angons and uh, and still have a really clean shading uh, without any normal transfers or you know shrink wrapping so the only thing you need to do again is to have enough of dense geo you need to know how to you know how to create a proper flow and also never disturb these supporting elements you know the edges that support curvature because when you do that you cannot retrieve that information okay so again if i remove this edge you know this shading is gonna shift so before i do that i need to create some supporting uh, structure for it and then remove what i don't need okay so the order of um cleaning topology is also very important all right well i guess we'll hope it helps you out it's um give it a bash and you know um study on some simpler pieces and then when you create something more complex you will know how to create a shading that doesn't really break on really difficult booleans okay so you don't need subdivision you don't need quads you just need to know how it works all right thanks for watching see you in the next one